It's December 2020, and this is a Rook Recap. Hi there, welcome to a special Rook recap and summary of our four-part series, Why Pink Floyd and Iranian Obsession. Salam, dostan aziz, khosh omadin, omidwar hastam ke mizun bashin. This is a countdown of the top 10 reasons for the connection between Pink Floyd and Iranians, as discovered through our series. I'm Gian Gomeshi, and we are on our ongoing mission to build an audiovisual encyclopedia of Iranian diaspora identity. And we are coming to you on SoundCloud, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify, Telegram, and YouTube. And we would love you to subscribe on any or all of those platforms. If you like our content, just press that subscribe button. Hi, Shaijun. Hello, Zian Jan. Hi. How are you doing? Great. How are you Happy doing? Christmas. Happy in between Christmas and <laughs> New Year's yes, to you. To you too. Um, so we did this series, yes. and uh, thankfully a lot of people have been checking it out, but it is six hours long, and it's four parts, and it's 15 guests, so we know not everyone has listened to all the parts. Uh, I should explain. I mean, the series we've released explores the strange and deep connection between the Iranian people, especially through the 1980s and 90s, and the legendary British rock band Pink Floyd, because nothing says Persian culture more, <laughs> more like Pink Floyd. Uh, yeah. But there is unquestionably a disproportionate affection there. and we So we had set out to examine all the reasons why. So um, we've talked about this as a team, and obviously, Shia, our preference, of course, is that folks check out the whole series. It's in four parts, 15 guests from around the world, including prominent musicians and producers and music critics and label owners and academics, over six hours of content and uh, a lot of music. Please do check it out. Um, it, it's much more comprehensive than we can be in, in 10 to 15 minutes trying to do a summary. But we'll try to give you this recap of the takeaways from the series and what some of our guests had to say. And if you have listened to the series, you might see if you agree with these conclusions. If you haven't listened to it, we hope this will entice you to, or maybe you just want a shortcut to the to the reasons. Mm -hmm. um, so Shai, are you ready for this? Yes, yes. So the question is a simple one at the heart of this, which is what recipe of ingredients formulated the secret sauce that would lead to the songs of a classic British rock band weaving their way into the cultural DNA of the Iranian people? How did a complex group of English musicians initially peddling ambient sounds and psychedelia become idols for generations of Persian populations inside an officially designated Islamic Republic? So I should note, uh, Shai, that what, what started as a journey into that connection with Pink Floyd really developed, perhaps not surprisingly, into a meditation on Iranian culture itself, on Iranian society, on music, on the political reality over the last half century. So it's about more than just a band, and you don't have to be a Pink Floyd fan or aficionado to come along for this ride, we hope. So... We're going to do this list style. It's going to be a short episode. Boom, you get the list. You you figure out what the takeaways are. And then, again, we invite you to listen to the entire series. It's uh, on all of our platforms. Uh, I love lists. I know people love lists. Some people hate lists. We're going to give it to you list style. And I'm going to do a countdown from 10 to 1 with the help of some clips from the guests that we, we spoke to in our series. Uh, of what we discovered. The top 10 reasons for the intimate, that long-lasting relationship between uh, Pink Floyd and Iranians. So, top 10 reasons for why Pink Floyd and Iranian obsession. Here we go. Number 10, the romance of melancholy. So number 10 is the gravitational pull of pathos for Iranians. That is, we tend to like sadness in our lyrics and music, it seems. If you are Iranian, 
you will know that even songs that are meant to be celebratory or upbeat are sometimes based on profoundly melancholy lyrics. And for some of our guests on this series, the sadness of Pink Floyd lyrics or the feeling of sadness in their music and lyrics was something that made them well well suited or jur with Iranian sensibilities. So on this, we heard from Siamak Shirazi in part three, Amir Bahari in part two, and Arash Sobhani in part three. Take a listen to what they had to say. Maybe because of, of the suppression, again, of religious, uh, you know, um, studies or, or, you know, practices, maybe we came up with this uh, connection with melancholy and sadness as something valuable, deep, uh, to cherish, uh, and, and happiness and joy and dance as something superficial. ولی یک مرتبه بعد از انقلاب همه این گروه ها میرن کنار و این پینک فلویده که خیلی محبوبه و شناخته میشه یکی از دلایلش به نظر من اون اندوه و حزنیه که برای ایرانی ها داره آرامشیه که پینک فلوی در ایرانی ها داره I feel like it's like a football team that gets used to losing and it just can't handle winning and uh, I think that's the case with a lot of old countries like Iran, Egypt, and, and, and these older countries that have gone through a lot. You forget about your happy moments in life very quickly. You know, you think that's how life should be. But when you fail or when you, there's a scar, it stays with you and, and you just look at it and it's always there. That is Siamak Shirazi, Amir Bahari, and Arash Subhani. Uh, number 10 on our list, The Romance of Melancholy. Now, number nine, drug culture. So, number nine would come as little surprise to folks growing up in the West, but was interesting to hear about in an Iranian context. It's no secret that Pink Floyd fandom has often been associated with drug culture from the Sid Barrett era of the late 1960s right through to the post-Roger Waters years in the 80s and 90s. But a drug culture was part of the connection and lasting appeal of Floyd within Iran as well, both before and after the revolution, and then in the diaspora. This point was most strongly made by singer-songwriter and kiosk frontman Arash Sobhani in part three of our series, and singer and academic Roya Arab in part one. Take a listen to what they had to say. The second reason that I believe it has contributed to this, and, and that's the drug culture that uh, was in Iran and, and goes very well with Pink Floyd music. I mean, when you listen to David Gilmour's uh, solos, you can almost smell the hash. <laughs> and, and I think that's, that's what made it really attractive uh, among the music lovers in Iran, because that was the uh, popular drug for the teenagers. So I think one should really look at facilities, what was available in the country the social aspect, the technological aspect, the intellectual aspect, the economic aspect, but more than anything, the drugs. Something like, wow, this 15 minute long sort of music. And if you're into drugs, you'll enjoy it with your drugs. That's Arash Shobhani and Roya Arab. So we're counting down the top 10 reasons for the connection between Iranians and Pink Floyd as a product of our series, Why Pink Floyd and Iranian Obsession, and hearing from the guests in that series. Number 10, The Romance of Melancholy. Number nine, Drug Culture. Remember to hear or watch the full four-part series. You can go to any of our platforms or go to our website, rookmedia.com. Number eight, Sonic Satisfaction. So, in assessing the connection with Pink Floyd and Iranians, the question begs to be asked repeatedly, that is, why not other classic rock bands? Or say groups with as strong an anti-authority message, why didn't the Rolling Stones break through? Or for that matter, the rebelliousness of punk rock from, say, the Sex Pistols to The Clash, especially after the revolution. 
Well, number eight on our list has to do with sound, and there is a case to be made that it's about the sonics that Pink Floyd used that differentiated them. That is, for example, the guitar and drum sounds. Musician and producer Reza Mokadas makes the case in part two of our series that distorted guitars and aggressive sonics were just not what Iranians were socialized to like or appreciate seeping into their ears. And while Pink Floyd were a powerful rock band, the sonic landscape they created was much more palatable to Persian ears. Take a listen to Reza. What I realized when I was younger and I used to listen to rock music with family and relatives and cousins and parents, something that they don't like, Iranians don't like, didn't like at that time, is the distortion sound of guitar. So Pink Floyd has this pleasant, charming sound of the guitar, not the uh, Hendrix or younger Eric Clapton from Townsend, time. Pete Townsend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Pete yeah. Townsend. So not that kind of distortion. Whenever I played those kind of music in like family gatherings and all my aunts and uncles and cousins are like, it's just, it just sounds like vacuum cleaner. It's not music. That is Reza Mokadas on number eight in our top 10 countdown of reasons why Pink Floyd and Iranian obsession, sonic satisfaction. Let's go to number seven, social class and sophistication. So number seven on the list is a point that was brought up by a few of our guests, but quite resonantly by music journalist and rock critic Amir Bahari in Tehran. Amir makes the case that in the inverse of what we might experience in the West as rock music coming from the streets or even the working class at times, that in Iran, it was about those who could afford to access it, to play it, and to understand it in the 1980s and 90s. And as such, Pink Floyd became associated with refined tastes and a certain level of sophistication amongst the urban creative classes. That led to widespread appeal. Here is Amir Bahari from part two of our series on the appeal of Pink Floyd, social class, and sophistication. همه فکر می‌کنن این یک گروهیه که گوش دادن بهش جست روشنفکری داره ولی مثلا گوش کردن به بیتلز جست روشنفکری نداره مثلا گوش کردن با مثلا هیچ ادراکی از مثلا باب دیلن به این اندازه وجود نداشته که خب اگر به یعنی میدونی موسیقی راک موسیقی به نسبت طبقه کارگری و در واقع کف جامعه بوده موسیقی بوده که هر کسی میتونه سازی بخره و شروع کنه به ساز زدن ولی گیتار الکتریک هیچ وقت در ایران ساز ارزانی نبوده یعنی میدونید اون موسیقی راک و بلوزی که طبقه پایین جامعه در مثلا امریکا انگلیس اینا گوش میکردن اون موسیقی در ایران یک چیز دیگری بوده That is Amir Bahari on social class and sophistication. Number six on our list, the wall and anti-authority messaging. So number six is an element of Pink Floyd that came up regularly in our series as a reason why Iranians, particularly in an increasingly repressive post-revolutionary Iran through the 80s and into the 1990s, would gravitate towards this band. And that is their famous anti-authority and anti-Big Brother message. The idea is that themes of Pink Floyd's concepts, messaging, and lyrics resonated with a population fed up with government, fed up with repression, suppression, and anti-democratic rule. The resonance would especially occur as the iconic Floyd album, The Wall, would seep its way into the Iranian consciousness through the 1980s. On this note, Marol Mohammadi, Sonos Sotudeh, Ali Azimi, and Sepp Osli all had thoughts. Take a listen. I think the obsession with Pink Floyd um, is more with the album, The Wall, than Pink Floyd alone. But I think it's it's a lot of the messages that they have in the lyrics that 
young people and kids growing up in Iran with during rev revolution, after the revolution, all the oppressions, all the lack of everything, yeah. like every, the people being thirsty for something um, that would uh, kind of speak what they are feeling. Uh, especially, I love their uh, rock opera album, The Wall, and um, because of the strong message of freedom behind it. In general, freedom in society, in educational system, freedom from government. In a very early age, I actually watched the, the movie by Alan, Alan Parker as well, which was uh, not very appropriate to my age. But you know, it was, it was, uh, I, was I was shocked. I was shocked. And um, it must have been the, the first songs that I heard must have been from that album, The Wall. The Wall, I think, was the biggest aspect because that was when the revolution happened. Right. And that, that sound remained with us because it meant so much to all of us. That was in the order you heard the Moral Mohammadi from part three of our series, Sonos Sotudeh from part four, Ali Azimi from part one, and Sepp Osli from part two on their thoughts about the wall and anti-authority messaging. Once again, this is just a countdown summary of why Pink Floyd and Iranian obsession. Remember to hear and watch the full four-part series. Check it on any of our platforms or perhaps most easily at our website, rookmedia.com. Number five on the top 10 reasons why Pink Floyd and Iranian obsession, simplicity. So, so you think you can tell. So while the case can certainly be made that Pink Floyd's music is complex at times or can be sophisticated and highly conceptual, the point was also made throughout this series that the accessibility of Pink Floyd to Iranians was and is in its simplicity. That is, both musically and lyrically, Pink Floyd can be very understandable. The lyrics are meted out slowly and don't involve too much complexity of language. The music, although expansive and atmospheric and full of lush and brilliant guitar solos or keyboard riffs, is ultimately delivered on a bedrock of simple straight chords. This was a point made by Reza Mogadas in part two, Dara Darai, the bassist in part one, Maral Mohammadi and Arash Subhani in part three of our series. Take a listen. Pink Floyd is not that progressive. They used only five chords to compose their entire music chair. True. There's so simplicity the there. Yeah. Of, exactly. The structure of the songs are so simple that you can easily remember. You listen to one song and it just stays in your mind the whole the rest of your life. Besides lyrics, the other thing, it's the music itself, which um, is very simple and very narrative and uh, very dreamy. And uh, uh, also it's very visual. The, the melodies, like right. the fact that right. the melody is so followable in a way, right. um, that kind of makes the complex um, of the music and the arrangement easier to digest and, and they can kind of um, connect with the music easier. Because a lot of the lyrics that Pink Floyd has is really uh, not as deep as you think. You know, when something doesn't make sense, you can, you can feel like, okay, it might mean this or it might mean that and you just get your own interpretation. But Bob Dylan is, 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 is the ultimate poet and, and he's not as half as popular as, as Pink Floyd. That was Reza Mokadas Dara Darai, Maral Mohammadi, and Arash Subhani. Now, number four on our list Persians and Progressive Rock. You see, number four is a big one on the list of the reasons why Pink Floyd and Iranian obsession, and that is that an affection for Pink Floyd is and was related to a general devotion to what has often been called progressive rock, especially in Iranian circles. That is long form fusion music that involves the elements of classic rock, but can be more atmospheric, more improvisational, and certainly more musically adventurous. This case was poignantly made by bassist Dara Darai in part one of our series in Tehran. Musician Loga Ramin Torkian in part four, speaking to us from Los Angeles, 
and label owner Ramin Sadiqi in part one and Anush Sabuktakin in part four. Take a listen. I think um, our love for uh, progressive music is because of our um, tendency towards complexity in a way. Uh, I mean, uh, we have so many stories and fairy tales that uh, it's about um, someone should cross so many levels of difficult uh, situations to finally find something blissful and um, good and something spiritual. We have a very simple word for it in Farsi, to get to a point of hal. And actually, this is something that it's very untangible and yet very real. This is something that I, I think goes back into our culture. The progressive rock scene was something new, but uh, the content of the progressive rock music, there was more mysticism in that kind of music compared to what the Beatles or Rolling Stones played. I can't really pinpoint that, you know, the Persian culture maybe is is related, but I think Iranians like like good melodies and like it to, to see and hear it developed, not just like, as you said, like a three minute. Yes, the pop genre in Iran, maybe the pop rock genre was looking for for songs, but even like most of the pop songs that you see are not really the way that it was the the popular standard back in a day. That was Dara Darai Loga, Ramin Torkian, Ramin Sadiqi, and Anush Sabuktakin in that order. Talking about number four on our list, Persians and progressive rock. This is the top 10 list of reasons we discovered from our series, Why Pink Floyd and Iranian Obsession for that obsession. Let me recap the list so far. Number 10, the romance of melancholy. Number nine, drug culture. Number eight, sonic satisfaction. Number seven, social class and sophistication. Number six, the wall and anti-authority messaging. Number five, simplicity. And number four, Persians and progressive rock. So far, so good, Shia? Perfect. Yeah, actually, uh, you told me that you prefer the least, and I was curious to listen. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so far, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, we're into the top three. I think you know a couple of these for sure. And yes. The number three, uh, because I mean, we've talked as a team about what we heard, and there were some things that would get repeated by all of our guests, it seems. And certainly, the top three reasons are all things that were repeated over and over again by different guests but uh, we're going to pick the the ones that we thought really made the best case this is the top three reasons on why pink floyd and iranian obsession and number three lyrics poetry and philosophy so a number of our guests made the case that persians gravitate towards our strong tradition of poetry and philosophical writing and that Pink Floyd fits into this tradition much more so than other classic rock bands of the era, say like the Rolling Stones or the Who. Siamak Shirazi in part three, Roya Arab in part one, and the great Arash Mitui in part four all weighed in on this. Take a listen. Their lyrics, the, the mysticism that was peppered all over their lyrics, this existential crisis, these questions they, they kept asking, of the authority or or why or how you know we are here for what you know things like that that was uh, our iranian traditional music basically is made that way we are steeped in hafiz sadi rumi it is inevitable in the 11th century we were we we had an, a master astronomer who was writing the book of kings in poetry for heaven's sake See, Iranians are uh, very uh, intellectually profound people, you could say, I think. They have a very uh, rich cultural heritage on one hand, and on the other hand, they have been through, I mean, uh, generation after generation, their lives have been affected and demolished by various political, uh, social events like coups, revolutions, etc., etc. 
And all of these things, I think, have uh, made uh, Iranian people a people who tend to uh, have a philosophical approach towards issues. That was Siamak Shirazi in Portland, Roya Arab in London, and Arash Mitui in Tehran talking about lyrics, poetry, and philosophy. And it's time for number two on our list of reasons why Pink Floyd, an Iranian obsession, and number two is historical timing. So the number two spot on this list may have been the top reason for some of those we canvassed and some folks we've heard from since releasing our series in social media and sending us notes. The truth is all of the 10 reasons we are counting down here combined together to create the obsession with Pink Floyd and they are interlinked, but there's no question timing may have been everything when it comes to that connection with Iranians. You see, the ascendance of Pink Floyd in the culturally fertile period of the 1970s in Iran, the release of The Wall, just as the 1979 revolution was in play, and the intersection of Pink Floyd's best years being what Iranians are left with when access to music is shut down all of a sudden, are all major factors in how Floyd weaved their way into the consciousness of generations that were not even born when the iconic 1970s Floyd albums had been released. Label owner Ramin Sadiqi in part one of our series and singer-songwriter Siam Shirazi in part three both speak to this. Take a listen. If we consider the wall as the end right. of the real career, the revolution already started in Iran. So we got isolated in the 80s because of many reasons with the Western world. That isolation actually um, left us no other way to get or to stay connected to what we inherited in the 70s. The wall being the true connection or start of a true deeper connection uh, for, for the masses. Uh, not just in Iran, actually, probably the whole planet and, and maybe in the Middle East more, more so. Um, you know, it, I remember uh, when the wall came out, I was, uh, I was, of course, a teenager, but we lined up and it was at the beginning of the revolution. So the suppression of music was not there yet. It was getting there. So there you go. That's Ramin Sadiqi in Tehran and Siamak Shirazi in Portland, Oregon with number two, historical timing. It's the top 10 list of reasons why Pink Floyd an Iranian obsession. So far, the romance of melancholy, drug culture, sonic satisfaction, social class and sophistication, the wall and anti-authority messaging, simplicity, musically and lyrically, Persians and progressive rock, lyrics, poetry and philosophy, and historical timing. And finally, number one, the top reason why Pink Floyd, an Iranian obsession. Access to music. So the number one component to how Pink Floyd would become a disproportionately heroic rock band for Iranians way above all else was access to music, in particular, of course, after the 1979 revolution. Almost every guest we had on our series told stories of how they first heard Pink Floyd through an older brother, an older sister, uncles, fathers, mothers, or even grandparents who held on to cassette tapes or reel-to-reels and privately passed the music down to their progeny after the revolution when it was officially criminalized and disallowed. These were the records that Iranians had owned, and these were the records that were passed down. But there's more as well to the story. Given the lack of choice of what to listen to and what to get your hands on, Pink Floyd zoomed to the top in the privacy of Iranian homes in the 80s and 90s. And the cultural and musical pipelines that existed with places from outside of Iran were particularly important too. Think Turkey and in particular Germany. This is where culture and music was predominantly coming from, if from anywhere outside of Iran. And Germany was one of the places where Pink Floyd were iconic. The question of access to music was something that was repeated by almost all of our guests in our series, making the case that that was the preeminent reason for that connection 
with Pink Floyd. When you take everything else as well, here are some of our guests on this case. You heard your, your parents playing it, your uncles playing it, your older siblings playing it. Thanks to my uncle uh, who introduced me to Pink Floyd. My uncle uh, was into rock music. Actually, a neighbor of mine gave it to me to listen to. We all grew up with listening to, our, uh, to the cassette tapes that was left for us uh, from uncles, brothers, or whoever had left the country in 79, and they left a the vast amount of music. I remember that uh, my uncle uh, had a tape. I, I had an uncle, and he listened to mostly um, non-Iranian music. The reason why I uh, became a big fan of Pink Floyd was the influence I had from my older brother and my older cousins. The music that came to Iran, the rock music that came to Iran, it, it was mostly the UK charts and Germany especially. Perhaps a German a music lover got connected to Pink Floyd. There you go. The number one reason why Pink Floyd and Iranian obsession access to music. To take nothing away from the lyrics, the music, uh, the historical timing, the poetry, the philosophy, the progressive rock, the simplicity, uh, the anti-authority messaging, the f sophistication and the sonic satisfaction, the drug culture and the romance of melancholy. These are the reasons we discovered on our journey through um, this Pink Floyd uh, experience. And also, uh, sorry, there is no need to mention that there is a thousand uh, another point in the Yes, for yes. That for and even, even through this series, we heard yes. so many other reasons. We decided to distill it to a, a top 10 list. Yes. What about you, Shia? What, what do you think? I mean, I sort of carved out this top 10 and I asked you a little bit about what you thought, but what, what do you think would be the main reason for you? Um, I, honestly, I think the, for me also, the two of the, I mean, number two and number one is the main reason the timing, timing and access exactly yeah. yes and and also uh, i would say the sonic is really important uh, i mean for example in the interview that we've had with loga loga ramin turkian in part four yeah yes he mentioned something about being mid-tempo which i can put it in the category of sonic and it's really important, you know, the way that they produce music is really goes with Persian taste. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, um, uh, I've been so grateful to be able to go on this adventure and, and to talk to all those guests and to try and come up with some understanding of this to for the hypothesis and create the thesis and have the top 10 list. Um, we really want to hear from you guys. Post on social media on our platforms. Let us know. Uh, you can write to us at info at rookmedia.com. Of course, um, we do invite you to listen to that four-part series in its entirety. Uh, it, it is worth it. I, I still think you don't want to miss. I mean, for yes. example, part two, Reza Mogadas, uh, Amir Bahauri in Tehran, and Sepp Osli. What a trio. And then yes. part three with Arash and Maral and, uh, and part four and, you know, all of it. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, please check it out if you have the inclination or you have the time or you have the interest. In the meantime, you can find everything about Rook, including all of our previous uh, over 70 episodes at rookmedia.com. Thank you to the amazing Rook team for working so hard on this. Happy Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Yalda, Happy Hanukkah, Happy all those things <laughs> that you say at the end of Je December as we lead into 2021. Yeah. Probably actually we have to add a ceremony, Happy Pink Floyd on Persian culture. That's right. Happy Pink Floyd to you. Uh, and uh, uh, again, if you agree or disagree with the list, we're happy to hear from you. Um, thank you. Mizunbashin.